Black Mirror. It's clever, right? Showing ways how technology can be used in abstract ways and how technology is going to change our world. Now, I personally can't watch this show any later than about 5 p.m. <laughs> I'd wake up in the middle of the night screaming. It's quite scary. The scariest thing of all is that it's not that far from the world that we live in today. It's quite real. Now, I've got another question for you. And by no means am I checking and tracking how much TV you guys watch. But who saw this recent debate between Elon Musk and Jack Ma? Show of hands? It's got a lot of news coverage at the moment. And I found this fascinating. The tech geek in me loved this. They were talking about the impact that technology has on our world. And also whether technology is good or whether it's bad. And I work in technology. So I found this particularly fascinating. But even I have been going back and forth. Is technology good? Is technology bad? And there's a reason for that. And here's why. Now I think that technology is amazing. It's changing the way that we work, live, play and learn. If I think about how I use technology, connecting with friends on social media, collaborating with my colleagues, and so much more, things like virtual doctor appointments, shopping delivered to a door in 60 minutes, it's just changed my life, and I'm sure that it's changed a lot of yours too. Now, on the other hand, technology is bad. About a month ago, I dropped my laptop on my foot. <laughs> now, it hurt a lot, and I've cried like I've never cried before, and I mean ugly cry, really cry. And it was only after a 12-hour flight from London to San Francisco that I realized my leg was broken. So yes, technology did this to me. Technology put me in this boot. Technology is evil. <laughs> but seriously, technology can be really bad. We hear about technology all the time in the news. Technology in the dark web, people holding people to ransom, people stealing personal data. It's all quite scary. I recently watched another documentary about the Cambridge Analytica and Facebook story, and I found that fascinating because technology has started to influence politics and the way that our society is operating and the way that this world works. Now, I work in cybersecurity, so I have a bit of experience with this firsthand. So we're working to protect you. We're working to protect you from people like this. Now, how many times have you received an email from a prince asking for money? And I find it really ironic, because they're princes. So why are they asking for money? And I would love to be able to ask them, send out an email, and I would love to be able to ask for a million dollars, because it would certainly help me get onto the London property market. <laughs> but technology is about so much more than that. Technology does so much good in this world, and I just want to spend a few minutes sharing how that is. So continuing my TV trivia, if anyone saw the National Geographic documentary, This Rhino, it's a few of us, I think, in this room, it was covering the really important topic of animal poaching. And in 2017, 1,028 rhinos were killed. That's three rhinos every single day. And they're murdered and they're killed for their rhino horns. Now, this documentary was showcasing how innovative technology is helping to reduce the number of poachers that happen every day. And through technology like solar cameras and biometrics, Wi-Fi, lands and networking, as well as cybersecurity, we are able to reduce the number of poachers down by 96%. We're going from three a day to about three a month. And we're committed to making that zero and also expanding to other species as well. But if we take a step back, because that example is just amazing of how technology has helped there. The real reason that people are poaching is because the people that live in the surrounding areas of these reserves are living in poverty. So just like you and I, they're trying to put food on their tables and a roof over their heads. And one rhino horn alone can get a poacher five years worth of salary in one day. So imagine a five-year payout in a day. You see, this is a human problem that we're trying to solve here. And then us as humans are trying to find ways to use technology to solve the problems that us as humans have created in the first place. Now, I was really fortunate because earlier this year, I was able to go out to Africa and experience firsthand how we can be helping with technology. I visited Malawi. It's one of the most beautiful countries that I've ever visited in the world. And we were going out to the rural areas. And I was really surprised to see people living there without any shelter over their head, with little food, and they were walking miles and miles to get access to clean water. And coming from a technology background, naturally I was trying to find ways that technology could be helping to solve these problems. But they had no infrastructure. And so I was jumping up and down with excitement when the organisation that I was volunteering with, Fisherman's Rest, was using an app. They called it Mansia Lipo. 
and that translates as availability of water. And that app was using really simple technologies. Technologies like 3G. So when you were in the built up areas and you had some coverage, you could then download the maps of the rural areas that you're going into. You then head out to those rural areas with absolutely no connectivity and you input all of the data and it auto uploads when you come back into those areas where you have the connectivity. So there's no real groundbreaking technology here. It's actually very simple. It's a basic app. And it's nowhere near the advancements that we're seeing with things like 5G. But it is having an impact, because water authorities <coughs> can see where the water points are, how many people have access to them, and get help to those that need it the most. Now, what really amazes me about this example is that, like I said, there is no groundbreaking technology. It's the human beings behind that that are using it in creative ways. It's the human beings with the big hearts that are wanting to make a difference to the world. And then with humans and with technology and partnership together, that's how they're making a difference <coughs> and impacting some of the world's most basic human needs that we have, water. Now I'm aware that I've used a couple of examples which you may not be able to relate to day to day. And there are lots of organisations that are working with targets like this, targets like affecting positively 1 billion lives by 2025. That's just around the corner. But I believe that these corporations are doing amazing work but we all, as citizens of planet Earth, have a responsibility when it comes to technology. I think that we all have a choice. Now, I'd encourage you to think about your own relationship with technology. When is technology serving you, and when is technology not? Do you reach for your phone in the morning before you reach for your partner? Or do you share big news on social media before you share it with those that are really closest to you? Because I can say I've been guilty of some of those. Now, my good friend, Philippa Waller, once shared this beautiful quote with me by Tom Bruno Magditch. This quote touches me every single day because it's a reminder that we always have a choice. You can do something or you can do nothing. And I believe that we as humans have a choice on how we behave with technology. Historically, technology has shaped the way that we are today. But have we thought about how we can be shaping technology in the future? I think that we need to actively participate be part of this conversation with technology, because otherwise, technology is going to happen to us. Now, I grew up around technology. I live and breathe technology every single day, and I think it's amazing. We all use it to make things better, faster, easier, more convenient. But really, it's our human stories that make it meaningful and give us purpose. Now, I mentioned that uh, I dropped my laptop on my foot earlier, and I broke a button for me. But what I didn't mention is how I felt at the time when I <coughs> found out this news. The first thing that crossed my mind is how will I continue to see my therapist? Because I have a lot going on in my life right there, and her being in this boot meant that I couldn't drive to see her anymore. And I felt hopeless at the time. And it was technology that saved me. Thank goodness for video conferencing. But I have learned from that that I'm grateful for technology, but I'm the one that sets the boundaries on how it's used. I'm the one that has the impact on technology. You see, I don't think that it's technology that's always bad. I think sometimes it's humans. Watching too much TV, that's a choice. Trolling someone on social media, it's a choice. Dumping someone via text, that's a choice that a human being is making. And stealing data, it's dangerous, yes but as a human being that's making that choice. I think that it's us as humans, we're the ones that need to upgrade, we're the ones that need to develop, and we need to show technology what it means to be human. Because I'm always living in hope of humans and using technology right. I refuse to live in fear of technology in our future. Now I've got a couple of last questions for you. Who here has said that they're gonna do some housework and they're gonna clean the fridge, but you end up in Netflix instead? <laughs> or you say you're going to go for a run and you end up ordering pizza. I can put my hand up again to that. And who here has said that they're going to do a TEDx talk and they've always been scared and then they've never applied? I can put my hand up to that. Well, I've done my TEDx talk. I follow through with my commitment. And now it's your turn. I believe that you're the bridge between what the world hopes for and what is possible tomorrow. So I'm inviting you to take a pledge. Take the Be The Bridge pledge. This means that you're committing to use technology for good. Simple as that. And then I want you to turn to the person next to you, whether they're a friend, family or stranger, you can do this in the break. And whether you're in the room, 
or whether you're watching later online, you can be part of this movement. Share your pledge. What are you personally going to do to impact technology? Why don't you take a selfie with that person and share it on your technology platform of choice? Because I think that we can all have an impact on technology. We should show the world that tech is good. Thank you.